Hello, how are you? What's up? What's How's up? Kak, what what is what are you what are you up to right now? Working, Working. working, working. How about you? Oh, also working. Work and enjoying life. Interesting. Who works more, me or, or you? I thank you. I thank you. You should work more because you're younger. Yeah. Let's say you, you cannot uh, overwork me because I work seven days a week, 14 hours a day, so it's impossible. You can only work smarter. You cannot work harder than me. I'm the hardest working. <laughs> work with more leverage, right? Yeah. Can let's let's start off with that actually because that's a very interesting topic. How do you work 14 hours a day? 14 hours a day. I sleep uh, 7. Mm -hmm. 24 minus 7 is uh, 17. So from 17 uh, I work. I mean, 14 hours roughly. 12 to 14 hours. Something like that. But, more, and more, but, but, but most likely even more than 14 because, uh, uh, because I... I'm thinking about uh, business uh, uh, all, all my waking hours. It says no sound. What do, do what does it mean no sound? A um, couple of people in the, that are watching say that there's no sound right now. So let's ask Sergey. Uh huh. Yeah. And what do you what do you usually do the so you 14 12 to 14 hours you work so and basically i wake up i start thinking about business right away and uh, and i stop thinking when i fall asleep all this waking hour hours uh i'm i think about my game this is my game i'm thinking about the game i love this game so much i cannot stop thinking even when i'm with the in a relationship with somebody like i'm I can talk about one thing, but but <laughs> second, second half of my brain thinks about uh, uh, business. Always thinking about work. Yeah, so That's... 14 hours, it's uh, pessimistically, I think, even more. Yeah. What do you consider work, though? Because some people consider work like sitting behind a laptop and actually doing work. But you've told me on multiple occasions, like when you read a book or when you watch an educational YouTube video, you consider that work as well, right? course it's work because uh, it has purpose purpose of uh, becoming better in my game mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when i read or lately i start reading again buffett a couple of hours a day i'm enjoying uh, tremendously again mm -hmm. so of course this is work because i'm uh, improving the way of thinking because on on the level that i play in business it's uh, it's like a chess is thinking i'm not doing i'm not selling myself i'm not uh, doing marketing myself I, I don't do anything myself it's just a st strategy it's uh, where to go who's supposed to play in which position and to, what to do next it's all thinking like a chess mm -hmm. so um, refining my thinking skills my uh, uh, intellectual business uh, ability right commercial i call it commercial thinking that's that's my job so the most productive work in my day when i uh, uh, read let's say annual report of the buffets that's i i feel that i'm working even even more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so oh, any input that you put in reading books watching podcasts Anything that has to do with business, you consider that work. What not on the business, even politics. Mm -hmm. What about like, for example, playing when, chess? When when, when I when I uh, when I uh, listen about politics, I spend time every day, some time about politics. Mm -hmm. um, I I to me it's work because why uh, why because understanding the political uh, situation in 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 the world uh, uh, helps business a lot. Yeah. If you don't understand the political situation, a business inside the politics, right. politics is even higher than business. Because I built a huge business in Ukraine and in Russia, you know, mm -hmm. and so I didn't anticipate that the uh, war will start. Is this and, something new? 
just after that situation did you start following no, him? No, I started approximately when I was 30 years old. Uh, I was uh, before 30 I was not interested in politics when I was when I turned 30 I remember I started uh, step by step uh, uh, listening watching into right. I got interested. But still I made a mistake. I built the business in the two countries which which is at war and I right. lost uh, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars because of that. That's that's insane. Do you think that there's anything that you could have done to maybe if you were a little bit more in depth in politics if you understood the global situation is there anything that you could have done a month before or two months before to help you better prepare for that situation to happen? First of all, I there was mistake to build the business in two, in those two countries. Mm -hmm. um, but again, doesn't matter. I'm just yeah. telling that for me, understanding the um, uh, political uh, situation, it's uh, it's also work. Also work. Um, what about like playing chess? Mm -hmm. Like, because no, because you're kind of working your mental brain. Oh, no, no, no. no? Mm -hmm. no only politics, business. Um, uh, personal development, yes. Yeah. All this uh, science of success, how to set goals, uh, beliefs, y yes. This is the foundation of success. Gotcha. So obviously you're on meetings and that's considered work as well. And now you're talking about books and audio and maybe reels on Instagram that you see. Like for, for the person, what for people watching right now, what would you recommend them to go out and what type of content would you recommend them to consume? What type of content do you consume? Um, I, I like um, founders of the big companies, Bill Gates, uh, etc. Many, many, many founders. Thanks God, uh, all the founders, all the big, biggest. If you take for 500 biggest name in business, mm -hmm. They all have interviews. They mm -hmm. all have uh, at least 10 to 20 hours minimum of content on YouTube right now. Various interviews, some more, some less. So I just watch basically how many people play in NBA? 500 approximately? Approximately, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so, so take 500 top business people. It's like NBA of business. Right. And uh, for a few hours a day, keep uh, keep uh, like you keep watching. If you want to become an NBA player, you have to watch how the NBA players play a couple of hours a day. Mm -hmm. Other than uh, practicing and playing yourself, you have to you have to see uh, images first. You have to in order to do something, you have to see images in your mind first. Mm -hmm. That's why all, if you want to become an NBA player, you have to watch at least probably a couple of hours a day other great players play. So that's what I do. Top top 100, top, top 10, top 50 uh, business uh, people. Not only who, uh, who live now, maybe uh, who used to live. Sam Walton, Henry Ford, and Rockefeller. Rockefeller, many, many... This is like an NBA player. So a couple of hours a day, I start. I try Buffett. I try to, um, I try to listen their way of thinking, right? By reading, by listening, by watching. Doesn't matter. Either you read, watch. Doesn't matter. The most important, you have to follow the way of thinking. How they think. How they see the world. Right. And what. I, and by talking about anything, whatever they talk about, you you try you step by step seeing their thinking patterns, right. how they react, how they see the world, and it's just uh, uh, millimeter by millimeter thing uh, goes to your mind and become become part of you. Yeah. Every cell, over, every, cell, every cell of your body is uh, is uh, uh, with with this knowledge, right? Very you interesting knowledge, and it, changes, favorite? and it changes you gradually, mm -hmm. gradually. Like you, when you grow with the height, you right. just 
you cannot uh, uh, you, you you cannot feel every day how you grow with the heights the same thing you 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 don't understand how it works but if you every day every day two three yeah. hours listen to top people you see the world differently yeah i've experienced that myself when you told me to go and read annual reports by buffett when i was reading it it didn't feel like i was getting taller or better in the moment but then something happened six months down the line where we're in a business situation and i'm like thinking back of what i learned from that book i was like damn that's the right thing to do yeah who would you say is your favorite because just uh, i'll tell you the the most important in in success is uh, the the uh, business is a chess is like a chess it's like it's more like a chess than basketball it's not physical it's yeah. mental so in chess all 100% depends on the quality of decisions that you make mm-hmm. it's not about physical it's just decisions you see the situation and you right. make decision decision right. decision in business the same you make um 100 this 100 decision or more a day small medium large sometimes yeah uh, so it's 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 all about the quality of decisions so when you study when you when you when you read and listen watch uh, top players in business it helps you to make decisions and it goes uh, and decision uh, you have to make fast sometimes like you have one second two seconds like it's a blitz uh, in chess yeah so, so the more the more knowledge you have in your uh, subconscious mind and the more situations the the better quality of decision you will make mm-hmm. and decision times decision time decision hundreds decision every day one day you're a billionaire why because quality of decisions that you made every day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very interesting that's actually a, a point that i want to touch on i had a question about who your favorite businessman is top player in the game and why but we'll circle back to that in just a moment i want to touch on these decisions i've i i heard jeff bezos say one time he only makes three decisions per day and when you make constant decisions over and over again you kind of lose energy for the big decisions right so he doesn't decide what to wear that's why he wears the same white shirt every day he doesn't decide what to eat he has other people making those decisions for him and he makes three decisions per day and they're very very important ones do you agree with that the most important one decision one decision one decision a day you know which one yeah which three to choose which (laughs) three the most important decision (laughs) yeah make which three things you need to do today yeah this is trust me i'm i'm doing this every day I'm, I, I, I sometimes I think for a, one hour about what three decisions about to do what today? three is the most important things right now. Wow. Wow. And usually what are they? Uh, on my level, it's usually people hiring the right people because you have problems, problems, problems. If you start, if you uh, in the certain department, let's say marketing department or purchasing department, a lot of problems. And if you if you try to solve those problems, it could be 10, 20, 30 things you need to do. Yeah. But decision of hiring the right person is just one thing you need to do. And he will do ev- or she will do those 30 things every day. Yeah. yeah. Let's go leverage. Instead of doing yourself, you just hire the right person. And then this uh, part of your business will be covered. And the most difficult is to hire somebody who is better than you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What other thing? What other pieces of leverage are there out there in business? Because there's capital. Capital brings you more money. People bring you more money. What else is there? It's a time leverage. When you when you hire a manager and under him, thousand people under this manager. So yeah. all these thousand people work for you, without you even managing those thousand people sounds great <laughs> yeah so it's called at it, it, uh, when i say people it means time of this people of those people eight hours per day times thousand eight thousand hours a day works for you 
and they, wow. they effort their brain when you think about it like that it's really they, their their creativity yeah their passion passion their passion creativity time work for you for them and for you yeah yeah, yeah. because you have a rare skill to put everybody together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do you They, develop that skill? how to develop how do you how do you pull the right people together Step by step, you learn to 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 delegate, to hire, to make uh, partnerships, agreements, uh, mutual uh, beneficial agreements. So it's good. People only work for, for will do something for you if you do something for them. Right. So you have to be. You have to. You have to have something to give to them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would not give it to you. What they have. Mm -hmm. Value for value. Well, well, for example, I am a bad in almost everything. So what can I offer then to other people so they do something for me? Uh, what I, I need to... So I, I have to be good in something. And uh, uh, you have to know your uh, uh, strength, strongest things that you can give to people. I'm good in uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. Uh, big thinking in mm -hmm. choosing the strategy, choosing the business model, then taking a risk, putting people together, inspiring people. That's what I, I put my business intellect, knowing what to do, how to build a big company. That's what I'm uh, good at. Yeah. And uh, people need that. That's why I give them this and they give me what they know. Marketing director. He know much better than me in marketing. Sales director. Purchasing manager. But they need so, somebody like me who will start the business. Yeah. Who will have a big vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's a leadership skill. That's like that's very leadership. important. To be a leadership. Leadership. How do you develop your leadership skills? Leader is the person who sees what other people don't see. Mm -hmm. For example, I see a billion dollar company. When I started building a sushi, I saw in my mind uh, Starbucks in sushi, 30,000 locations in sushi. I saw it first. And I start uh, telling people what I have in my mind, which not exist in real life. First time they hear... Interesting, but they don't see it. But when I repeat and repeat and repeat, a lot of people started to see also, see it also, and they start yeah. sharing this vision. And also I mm, promise them the piece of the pie if, if we will achieve this, plus paying them now salary. Also to investors, you, you, you tell your vision, And they start seeing your vision and they value the company and you start raising capital. So that's the leadership to see first and then communicate uh, to other people what you see mm -hmm. and convincing them so they start seeing it also before it exists, before. Mm -hmm. And But you start building and When you build this first floor, second floor, third floor, 10 restaurants, 20, 100, 200, the more and more people start really believing it. Right. And it's, it becomes easier to... But in the beginning, it's difficult. There is nothing exists. You have vision. Like with real estate I'm building right now. Yeah. Fractional real estate. I have a vision. Million of pe millions of people, uh, you know my vision. So I, I, I talk about it all the time. And gradually more and more people start seeing it also and yeah. joining. I, I was around while you were on a lot of your meetings with the top managers. And you told me that entrepreneurs, they're always seeing new things and they always have this vision. And the managers, they're usually like the team of no's, right? They, you, come there, you come to them with an idea. They say, oh, this is crazy. It's not going to work. And then you kind of try to convince them as to why. Sell, and then you sell, come sell. to, right, you got to sell them. And then you come to a mutual 
kind of agreement as to the next steps that you're going to take. So it's maybe like 50% of what you were thinking, but they're like, hey, that doesn't work. We, we could tweak it a little bit and make it work this way, right? Is it very important to have that team of no's around you that kind of level you down to the ground floor? Because we're always uh, thinking up in the clouds, you know, <laughs> as entrepreneurs. Yes, but also sometimes they're too skeptical. Mm-hmm. You cannot have too skeptical and too pessimistic. It has to be reasonable. Uh, uh, manager has to be reasonably pessimistic. Yeah. They have to have trust in you too. Because in every idea you can have, uh, you can see from the, from the other side and see thousands of negatives and kill every idea. Yeah. So if you have people like that, you should not, you should not have people like that in your team. Mm-hmm. Because you just kind of see a vision and you see like the end goal. And they, they have of, to be more practical, man. Yeah, they look uh, they look at the path and they look at like, oh, this step of yeah, the way. So many like, obstacles. And the, the my uh, advantage that I see something uh, far ahead, mm-hmm. but I don't see obstacles <laughs> on the way. And they see obstacles right away. And wow, wow, impossible, impossible. impossible. And I don't see those obstacles. My mind doesn't work. I, I don't see those details. That's mm-hmm. why uh, I, I have this vision. But uh, most of the details we can solve mm-hmm. on the way. Not every, not, not everything works. Yeah. It's like and a yin yang. They're opposite. Their mind works up uh, the opposite. They see small things, but they don't see big things. Yeah. yeah. So when I tell them about vision, they right away see the, the small things, which will... On the way, so many obstacles, how to do this, how to do that. And together with a proper combination of optimism and pessimism, the big picture and small steps in the, in the, in the right uh, proportion, you can build something. It's important to have both though, right? Yes, very important. Otherwise, if you have all dreamers on your team, nobody will... Nobody will do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you think that, that comes to you, whether you're an optimistic dreamer or a pessimistic uh, kind of guy? Like, is it just given to you by God when you're born? Or Obvious. is it? The- yeah. Every, everything only. You're born with, a, with either with the entrepreneurial talent or not. Mm-hmm. You're born. Even if you don't know. I... Mm, I started when I was 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, before before 23, you 20, and you yeah. already for a few years, like three, four years, uh, doing business. I only start thinking about business when I was 23. Before 23, not even one thought for business. But obviously, I had a talent. I just didn't know about it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but. Um, Every everybody born with a talent, either big talent or small talent, entrepreneurial or big manage, managerial talent or small managerial talent or big um, talent of doing something yourself like a basketball. It's it's it's, it's uh, you're not manager, you're not entrepreneur. You're doing by yourself. It's a, a, a technician. I call it technician, but it can be big talent or, or smaller talent. So yeah. we obviously we are born, but this is for, we. We born with two talents. One talent is that I told you just now. The second talent is talent of working hard or not. Mm-hmm. My biggest talent of is working hard. Mm-hmm. Second talent is for me my uh, for but uh, much bigger than first talent. I'm I'm I have a, I have talent, uh, entrepreneurial talent, but not as big as other some other entrepreneurs like mm-hmm. bezos elon musk they have bigger talent mm-hmm. i feel right? entrepreneurial but i have a second talent very big working hard yeah i mean bezos elon musk they also work 15 hours they also that's why they're more successful than me because they have both talents yeah higher. yeah it's very interesting how do you how do you understand who you are like how do you understand if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a manager, if you're a technician? Fe- How you does have that to, You have to uh, be fearless. 
most people they don't know who they are because they uh, they have fear to look deep inside mm -hmm. and to follow your uh, passion intuition for example parents tell you go to college and you yeah. don't want to go to college if you don't if you're not going to follow what you want you will never discover who you are right just have to stop being afraid listening to yourself and doing what you feel for example i remember i was 24 i have a crisis a spiritual crisis i was already uh, success i have i had first success in business made mm -hmm. fast money and had spiritual crisis Yeah. And I felt like lying in bed all day and reading books, spiritual books. So I, I, I was in bed all day and reading books. I didn't give a shit what other people thought about that, that it's wrong. Why are you lying the whole, or you're 24, you're, you're in bed all day, you're reading books, you don't want to talk to it, no one. So everybody wants against my my uh, girlfriend at that time and then first wife. One day she was she got so pissed that she took all my books and threw it away to to the garbage. So I had to go to the garbage. It was in La Jolla in, in San Diego. Uh, I I had to go to the garbage, uh, take uh, bringing back my books. Thanks God. <laughs> it was there still there yeah. it was it was uh, 94 before internet so it was only books available so it was like a treasure thank god she didn't burn them <laughs> yeah those books uh, why why because she felt that i'm i have relationship with the books not with her because books gave me energy those books that i read gave me uh, gave me life yeah she was she was trying to throw the books because was she was mad at books because books took me from her yeah yeah so <laughs> almost everybody was against me uh, in my 20s mm -hmm. but i didn't listen i was uh, i had courage to listen myself to myself what i want to do i quit college six months before graduation wow I actually didn't, never, didn't even know that. I thought you finished college. No, no, no. Six months before graduation. Because I started business, so I had no no desire to go to college anymore. So six months. Can you talk to me about like your your start? Um, because a lot of people, they go through many failed ventures before they find a successful venture finally that actually brings them money. In my, situation, my situation was different. All, yeah. my, my probably five, seven first ventures was successful. And then I had a lot of failures. Some people f have failures and then success. I have successes, a lot of successes, and uh, um, then failures. So the first ever business you started was successful? F yeah, f yes. Wow. And and do you mind sharing what it was? It it doesn't really matter. I mean, we have uh, we can talk about that, but uh, it's yeah. not it's not important. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not important. Then we were, Why do you think much, it was much successful? much much more important subject? Yeah. Why do you think it was successful? Do you think that you were prepared for it? No. Do you think you have no, the skill. I, I was. It was. Uh, uh, ah, the the main reason was successful because I I worked in the company for seven for seven months. In that I, in uh -huh. this yes, and I saw how this business works inside from, and I knew a eighty percent of of a, not hundred percent because owner didn't share like less twenty percent, but yeah. when you have uh known uh, known 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 you can figure out a couple of unknowns yeah so, so i felt that they have enough knowns to figure out the details and i was always uh, courageous in this sense mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 23 years old so i started i just 80 of of things that need how this business works i saw 
mm-hmm. by working inside. So it was uh, just knowledge of uh, of of this uh, industry. If That's you what... if you could go back to your early twenties, right? What specific skill sets would you develop to help you prepare for your entrepreneurial journey? Sales, obviously. What the, what you do is extremely important. Communication skills. People need to like you. Mm-hmm. You have to you have to talk to to people sort look and and talk to people certain way that they enjoy uh, exchanging energy. Communication is exchanging energy. We're talking right now. I mean, I am enjoying because you're attentively listening. Listening is, is the even more important, maybe not even more the same as the same importance of a skill as uh, talking. Mm-hmm. So you have to develop your communication skills, leadership skills, courage. You have to the most important is is courage. Courage. I mean, not in physical sense. I am not courageous in the physical sense. I drive slow. You know me. Uh, I I don't do sports like physical sports. I'm I'm uh, chicken in those things. But you have to develop courage o- on doing what you want. You want something. What I like about you, you want to go somewhere. You buy ticket and you go right away. That's what I did. And you're not afraid, not knowing what you're gonna do tomorrow. You're not afraid. Mm-hmm. You can live. You you can live in uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Most people cannot handle this le- this level of uncertainty. They need to know tomorrow where they live, what to do, how much they're gonna make. You, I see you talent in you in uh, entrepreneurial talent because I see how much uncertainty you can easily handle. And you, uh, by traveling, you buy ticket, you go. You, I remember, one months ago, you were you from you flew from New York to Portugal. Yeah. You, you just wrote me one day. Uh, uh, I'm going to Portugal. Why, Papa? Pa, pa, my friends, business, great. That's that's a sign of entrepreneur. Then you came back to New York. Few weeks later, you you write me. I'm going to Tbilisi, Georgia. That's that's how you build the muscle of entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, talking to a lot of uh, successful people and become uh, in, and uh, have a relationship with them. For example, you I know that you with Kola with my partner now. So I'm very happy when, when I see that you're talking to Kola. I know how good and smart Kola is. And uh, and I'm very happy that you spend time with him because you 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 will learn a lot. Yeah. I want to butt in for just a second. I I feel like I was given a gift by God by having a father like you because i also have your network right uh your partners your students i i of course went out and met people myself but i also have access to your network for someone who's not as blessed as me for someone who you know has parents who are not business people what would be the best ways to go out and get into circles of you know to establish a network of successful individuals if I if I were uh, twenty years old and I, I I saw you you I would try to become your friend because mm-hmm. if I become your friend, your network is is my network. Right. For example, one of your friend came to remember uh, came to, to Turkey, yeah, to Turkey, and uh, uh, you were part of all my negotiations and uh, talks, and he was part because he's your friend. Yeah. So it's not it's not difficult if you really want to associate with the. Uh, uh, yeah. 
with uh, people higher level than you you have to you have to um, be in the student uh, position yeah if you act like a student the all, all successful people will want to teach you if you don't if you try to act like a equal no it doesn't work like that you have to be equal but if you want to ask questions if you want to learn if you're sincere everybody wants to share knowledge mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. i've i've had a couple conversations in the last couple of weeks with some of my friends who are in school and i'm not necessarily saying that school is not the right choice for for certain people it is right we were kind of like putting out the weak points, putting out the strong points of school. And a lot of people emphasize when they are in school of network. That's why prime, like one of the main reasons as to why they're there. Right. But yeah. at the same time, they're paying $60,000, $80,000 a year to be in that school. And the point that I bring up is like, hey, you can take that $60,000, $80,000 and buy into a network, go into a networking event. Go into someone's mentorship. Yes, exactly. You're right. You're right. But it's something very risky for them. Plus pressure of the parents. Yeah, plus yeah. Uh, they're not uh, uh, as entrepreneurial maybe as you. Maybe they will be, but but now at this point is is still weak. So that's why it's a right choice for many people. When don't Remember, I told you if you if you don't do business, go to school. Yeah. But if you already started business, then not worth it. What if you're doing sales for some like you know? What if you're doing sales? Do you need to go to school? Sales, if you if it's if it's your work, if you you see the most important the, the most important is not school. The most important education. Yeah. If you feel that you can educate, uh, uh, if you can educate yourself, then you don't need school. I always, I, 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 I always like knowledge a lot. Yeah. But I hate. I all always hated school, but I love knowledge. Mm -hmm. So for me, I could read, read, read uh, by myself. And when YouTube uh, came along, that's 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 it. That's the best university. Now yeah, everything yeah. is in YouTube. But but most of the people they can only learn when they have to. Mm -hmm. They don't have such a strong desire to learn like me. Yeah. For me, school is not necessary because I'm learning myself every day, continuously, nonstop. Yeah, from the best, and I have access to the best now. Now, uh, especially, and everybody have access to the best because of YouTube. Yeah, but kind of most of the kids, yeah, if not school, they would not go themselves and take uh, and take uh, and start listening uh, finance one one on YouTube for free from Harvard professor. They they would pay to the Harvard and go to the same professor uh, to learn because they need structure. I don't need it. Yeah. This kind of circles back into our original topic of the top guys to learn from. And I said I was going to circle back to that. Well, who would you say is your favorite person or businessman to watch and why? Top 10 is one person. And everybody else is 11, 12, 13, 14. So top 10 is one person, Buffett, Warren Buffett. Why? He's on first place, second place, third place, all 10 places. He's by far the best. If I only can have, uh, let's say, on the, uh, on the island uh, with no people, uh, only 10 books, I would take all 10 books of Buffett. Can I and I actually asked my friend that that same guy that was with us in Turkey and he gave me a very interesting answer. He said if I was in, on an island stranded 
and there was no people and I had no idea about business, I would take a religious book with me. Because what the hell is the point of business when you're on an island and you're by yourself and there's no business? He's like, the only, your only thing that you can do is talk to God. Yeah, but uh, he's yeah. right because he has still unresolved questions with God. When yeah. I was 24, and he's even younger than 24. When, yeah. when I was 24, from 24 to 30 years old, most of the books that I read was not about business. Most of the books was spiritual books mm -hmm. because I had so many questions. But now I resolved all my questions. So now when you like in total peace and harmony with the higher power, then I, all my energy goes to business. That's why for me, much more, much more enjoyable to read Buffett than something else. Something that you know you don't want to read because you, you, you know you. Yeah. Why Buffett though? Because he's the deepest, deepest, wisest, why, uh, wisest. Is it correct word? Wisest. Wisest. I'm. Not, I'm I. I. I also didn't go to college. So. <laughs> it's, uh, he's a deep, wise. Uh, I like his um, human qualities. How he treats people. I like everything about him. He's. Uh, by far, by far the best uh, businessman that ever lived. And he has written himself, he wrote himself, uh, he writes every every year uh, annual report, and it's uh, this is Bible of the business. If one day I will uh, create the business school traditional for young people, like with the campus, it would be they would study for four years only this book. Mm -hmm. 80% of all this uh, education for four years, 80% would be this book, and 20% a little bit of uh, other things. 80. Wow. I, I actually heard you talking about this a lot. And it was like years, years back that you wanted to make a school and a campus for entrepreneurs. Is that still on your mind? No, no. <laughs> but I said, if if one day, no. Now I'm I'm I have, I'm enjoying building businesses, and uh, no, An entrepreneur is somebody like uh, you don't necessarily uh, have to teach him. An entrepreneur will always find uh, knowledge, especially yeah. especially now. Especially now, it's much easier. Believe yeah. me, can't imagine how difficult it was uh, when I started the business uh, to find the uh, quality information. I can imagine there was no internet. I no send you personally maybe three, four, five videos every day, right? Every yeah, day yeah. that I enjoy now with my 30 years of experience that whatever I like, I send it to you. Yeah. Can you imagine the if, if I like those videos with all the knowledge that I have? It's very high quality of information that yeah. are available right now. Mm -hmm. And the more quality of information you listen, you already have a taste for good. Yeah. So when you when you hear something shitty. You, you 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 will understand it right away because you have a standard. That's why it's important to read Buffett a lot because it's the highest standard. Yeah. You will identify easily something not uh, not right in business when you when you read a lot of uh, and listen a lot of quality of information. Yeah. By the way, I want to I want to say anyone who's on this live right now, and if anyone has any questions, just write it in the comment section down below. And we have Alex here for a little bit a little bit more time. So use your time wisely that you have with him and ask any questions that you have. Um, Alex, I want to ask you. He's talked about a lot of interesting stuff, uh, and I could I could go into many many different points, but. 
I want to to kind of go back to what we were talking about when it comes to entrepreneurial and, and operational energy, right? You've mentioned to me like it's the kind of the yin and yang of business. And you also say that 5% of business is commercial decisions and understanding where we have to go. And 95% of it is execution. Is that correct? But, How as do you far, but as far as importance, uh, vice, uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, if, if you decide what to do, but you don't do it, it will not work. If you will do it, but do will do something uh, wrong, it also will not work. But mm -hmm. it takes, obviously, it takes much less time and much less people to decide what to do. You you make a decision to fly to different countries, but then it takes so much time to buy tickets, to uh, put your clothes, to, to drive to the airport, to fly. So right. the doing takes a lot of time. The decision making take sometimes they take seconds, right? Mm -hmm. But importance is uh, fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. In order to, for, to in order f, uh, to something work, you have to have a right decision and right execution. If if wrong decision, right execution will not work. If if uh, uh right decision and and wrong execution also will not work yeah i'm for, for example i am a, a decision guy because the, the the bigger the company becomes you obviously it's stupid for me to do if i can hire somebody to do it why should i do i only supposed to do the work which nobody can do high level decision making yeah and the most important decision when you wake up what's next mm -hmm. what's mo most important three things needs to be done in the whole business then you take every department first you answer the question what's top three today not not in general today what's top three things today the most important, actually, a better exercise. You 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 write three things in life today. What's most important? It can it can be one thing from health, one thing relationship, one thing from business. Then you go to business. Then you write down what's top three in business today. The most important. Then you go to department. What top three in marketing the most important today? What top three in sales most important today? What three, top three in finance? What three, top three in purchasing? Whatever departments you have. Then you insist that all your team will not start working on, until they have these three things written. Yeah. If you implement this habit, you cannot uh, fail in the long run. You can't in the long, in the short time, yes. But you, it's I just under the, uh, to become uh, super rich and super happy. Super if if you do this every day, it's impossible not to achieve uh, big goals. Mm -hmm. Top well, three in life, then go down to, for example, top three in life, yeah, health. Yeah relationship business one 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 the, then top three in health today top three in uh, relationship top three in business then in business go deeper yeah in every department then you have 10 employees every employee has to write down top three things doesn't mean that we'll do only three but top three gives 80 percent yeah it's 80 20 rule Three gives 80% and maybe 10, 20, 30 other things can will, will do only 20%. But obviously you can't make all of the decisions in your business. And I was actually just watching a podcast recently. Um, it was a CEO, multi-million dollar company. And he's like, if you always tell your people what to do, 
it's never going to work. You have to say, hey, here's the mountain. We have to get to the top. There's 10 different paths to get to the top. You decide. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Is that the right? Absolutely. It's like if you go down this path and you tell the person, hey, go down this path. And then you have to tell every single department which path to go down. It's like it's going to take up your whole entire day and you can't even focus on the main thing. I right? almost never tell my, my team how to do it. It's like where we're where we're heading, right? First of all, I don't know. I don't. Uh, they're more qualified in finance and marketing and sales and operation than me. Yeah. I only tell them what and why. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm good at uh, organizational structure management. How it's supposed to be at every stage of the company. What type of what type of manager and what quality of managers has to be in 30 people company, 100 people company, 1,000 people company. It's very, very different uh, uh, quality of managers. Yeah. So kind of like where we're heading. We're going down this path. Yeah, where are we <laughs> heading? What kind of people has to play in the team right now? Yeah, That's yeah. what I, I decide. Yeah. On the right. top level, under them, no. Mm -hmm. they I, I don't interfere they hire their people it's their team but if I don't like somebody under them I tell them I not them I tell my uh, uh, direct report that this guy is under you is moron and explaining why but I don't tell him to fire him you mm -hmm. decide mm, very interesting recently I had the situation one I was all the time telling that this guy is under you is idiot. I highly recommend to fire him as soon as possible. And he's not only an idiot, he's uh, uh, not honest. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Honest. And, but but uh, then a uh, few days ago, he said, yeah, you were telling me already a few months ago. Now I... Uh, realized and i will do that but i was not pushing him because i wanted him to grow into this decision himself so he grows as a manager mm -hmm. we have some questions here that i want to that i want to run by you with people that were asking them out there in the chat first question here how do i maximize efficiency in operations between my managers and my operators Operators, I assume, are technicians. How do I maximize efficiency and operation between them? You have to learn management yourself. Then teach your managers management. Because you cannot teach what you don't know. Yeah. And they obviously uh, don't know. the. That's the profession, by the way where the lowest quality of uh, low, lowest quality of um, uh, of work in this profession uh, doctors lawyers uh, musicians they, they are very developed less 100 200 years the the level is very high all sports but management did not develop in in, in uh, less two hundred years. It's still as imagine doctors two hundred years ago. It, it's it's different world. The doctor now and doctor two hundred years ago, but manager two hundred years ago and now is the same. So most of the managers they have no clue how to really professionally manage. Mm -hmm. The, actually, uh, uh, so that you have to learn. You have to learn management. Yeah. Then teach them. Learn management doesn't mean manage. You learn to understand yourself. Then you teach them, and then they professionally manage uh, uh, their stuff with the numbers, with the um, goals, with the plan, fact, analysis daily, and many, many, many things. Which I teach, by the way. Mm -hmm. Follow-up question, actually. It's related to this point. How do you determine the most important qualities of a good manager? What are the most important qualities of a good four, manager? Four. Four. Very simple. Four. 
Take down notes, guys. Everyone, take down notes. Pen and pad. <laughs> Very simple. And you will you will remember uh, what I will tell you. You will remember for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. In the body, in the human body, you have three most important things. My take out a. I'm gonna take out a pen and pad, uh, so I don't miss this. Right. But you will remember. This is very very easy. You have okay. mind. You have mind in your body. Three things: mind, uh, spirit, mm-hmm. and actual body, physical body. Mind, spirit, and physical body. Mm-hmm. Right. Very easy to remember. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so with this analogy, mind is uh, smart. Mm-hmm. Mind can be smart or stupid. So you need somebody smart, mm-hmm. starting with the smart mind. Then spirit mm-hmm. either first. is era, either honest or dishonest. Honest, uh-huh. fair, reasonable. Yeah, and with the energy reasonable because with the mind he's he he he's could be very smart but dishonest. Dishonest meaning that he wants to take more than he gives. Yeah, always wanna in every communication he just wanna take more than he gives. He's not a giver. That's that's dishonest person for me. Honest and dishonest on the spiritual level. Honest is always wanna fair exchange fair. Yeah, if he gets thousand dollars, he want to give uh, 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 service or product or for thousand dollars. He, he yeah. that, but dishonest people want to give take thousand and give zero or um, no value. Yeah, hundred dollars, two hundred, but take more than they give. Yeah, I call it honest dishonest. So you want smart and honest too. Mm-hmm. Three, body. Remember, physical body, mind, spirit, and body. It's very easy to remember. Mind, spirit, body. Body represents hard work. Mm -hmm. For example, for me, I need I need twelve, fourteen hours a day, seven days a week to work, in order to feel good. Not because I have to. Otherwise. It's like a, a drug addict. If it doesn't take this portion of drug, it's 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 not comfortable. For me, this is like a drug. To work is like a drug. I need seven days a week, not even six. My friend, I have a friend, he's 60 years old, he runs marathons. Mm-hmm. If he, he if he if he doesn't run 60 years old, if he doesn't run 10, 10 kilometers. In the morning, he he cannot function. That's the that's he he body requires his body requires. So every person that you meet, as far as work, his body or uh, requires certain amount of uh, work a day. Either two, some people two hours a day, some people four, six, eight, ten, seven days a week, six days a week, five. It's also you cannot can't be changed. So again, mind, spirit, body. Mind is smart. Mm-hmm. You need somebody smart, somebody honest, somebody hardworking. Not necessarily seven days a week. It's very few people who need seven days a week, like me. Yeah. Uh, five, six. Eight hours is fine. Some people need 10, 12, like me. So this is third. Easy to remember, right? Yeah. Smart. And number honest. four. And number four is expertise. Mm-hmm. Because somebody can be smart, honest, hardworking, but not an expert. For example, you have a salesperson. And he, you like him at work. Why? Because he's smart, honest, hardworking, and he's a good salesman. Yeah. Then you decide to promote him to a management position. And all of a sudden, you're unhappy and you want to fire him. Why? <laughs> he's still smart. He's, he's still honest. He's still hardworking, but he's not an expert as a manager. Right. 
So you need all four. But if mm -hmm. somebody is an expert but not smart, you don't need. If somebody is a smart uh, expert, smart and not honest, you don't need him or, or her. This is a this is really valuable, honestly. So, so every person you see through these four things, very simple. Yeah. Just through simple, this but very very valuable. Smart, honest, hardworking, and an expert. And an expert. Yeah. Another person and, writes and and, and 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 it was my mistake that I put him as a manager. I yeah. wanted to fire him. I had to fire myself because because when I started to think before I liked him, why? Because he was doing what he what he he likes and knows to do. He's an expert in 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 this. Uh, I had the situation recently like that. The guy was uh, good in his position. I promote him as a manager. He was very bad as a manager. Mm -hmm. So he was so smart. Man management is. But management is a, is a different expertise. Is it you have to be expert manager? Yeah, yeah. You have you a, a entrepreneurship is a expertise, special expertise. Yeah, it's different than management. It's it's having a vision. It's inspiring people, uh, getting everybody together, including money, finding money, finding people. It's putting putting everything. It's a skill. It's an entrepreneurial skill. So you can be smart, you can be honest, you can be hardworking, but not not an expert as an entrepreneur. That's why it's not enough. Those three things: smart, honest, and uh, hardworking. You have to be entrepreneurial expert, talent first, talent, and then then uh, talent plus experience equals expertise. You have obviously. Very strong entrepreneurial talent, and but for three for three years you already you already learning, yeah. So you have talent plus three years of experience, so you you already certain level of an expert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to choose, and you have to choose. You cannot be an expert in everything, so you have to choose you. Either you were if because expertise it takes honest, it's you either honest or not. Smart, you either smart or not. Uh, hard working, you're hard working or not. The only thing that you can constantly improve is you as expertise. And it I already for 30 years improving my expertise. So the sooner you choose in which field you want to be an expert, the better, because it takes Many, many, many years, and you become better and better and better every day. Yeah. We have someone in the chat writes, Alex, your management advice 5x the scale of my business. Thank you. I'm happy. <laughs> so that's great. I love that. Now we have another question. It's actually this is this is this has to do with, with what we're talking about right now. My biggest issue is trust. How can I hire someone to work for me if I can't trust them? You can't, right? You cannot be entrepreneur. Uh, the, the the biggest strengths of entrepreneur they uh, they're delusional. <laughs> I mean, they they see people better than they are. I mean, yeah. yes, they lose money because of that in the beginning. Then they become. Uh, uh they start uh, trusting less later but in begin in the beginning that's the reason that uh, they just uh, trust people and they trust wrong people but they then they learn but because they trust sometimes wrong sometimes right people uh, they start the business and and on the way On the way the business grows, they become more experienced. Without trust, you cannot live. It's illusion. The the life uh, based on trust. I'm sitting right now. I trust that uh, construction people build this building uh, yeah. correctly because the my <laughs> fall, uh, I'm on the 36th floor right now. 36th floor, yeah. <laughs> when I when you drive on the street, you trust uh, everybody. Without trust, you cannot live. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to if it's difficult you have to learn to trust. That's the for me I have to I had I had to learn 
to stop trusting too many people. Right. I, I there was too much trust. But if somebody has little trust, it has to on the other way, he has to learn to trust. I can I can kind of because I have so much thoughts and I have so much questions about like these specific topics, but I really, really, really want to run through like the audience's topics and everyone watching. So let's just dive into their questions. We have a guy here, he writes, I'm currently starting my own company. We are focusing on Salesforce implementation for U.S. companies. I'm assuming he's helping businesses set up their CRM system. Can you give me a few pieces of advice on what I should start with? Can you repeat that again, please? I'm sorry. I'm currently starting my own company. We are focusing yeah. Salesforce Im implementation for U.S. Okay. companies. Okay. Can you give me a few pieces of advice? Yes. Uh, if you start your company, usually you start yourself. The most important, there are two things in uh, in business, to promise and to deliver promises. Promise is sales. So it sells three things uh, is uh, lead generation, uh, marketing, and uh, sales. This mm -hmm. is, I call it promise. You promise by lead generating, by marketing, marketing is design, brand, offer, price. Right. Yeah, to put, to explain, exp write explanation of what you're doing, material, marketing material, then lead generation, then uh, sales, conversion. That's promise. You promise people that you will do something. Then uh, delivering the promise, it's everything else. Everything else, it's a product, it's a service sometimes, a service business. And everything else is, is, is so the business uh, consists of two these big things. So you always, if you start a business, you always start with promise. So you, you, you don't have money to hire people, you go yourself and you sell, sell. Yeah. You find the uh, lead prospect by advertising or just uh, door to door whatever uh, and you sell you convince when you sell you promise yeah and people based on this thing that we discussed earlier trust they, they see you if you look uh, good if you talk good and they this somebody will one out of ten two out of ten ten percent conversion twenty percent conversion will decide to try to put trust on you and will buy. Yeah. Then you have to deliver the promise. So when you start the business, you do both. Promising, delivering. First half of the day you sell, second day of the day, second half of the day you deliver. Then you, yeah. you you get you 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 get first money from the clients instead of uh, buying a new car, you hire somebody who will help you to deliver promise, not to sell mm -hmm. first. But it's the right way to 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 build the business. For, you, you sell and deliver, then you stop delivering. You hire somebody who will deliver on your promise, and you keep promising already full day. So you you work as a salesperson full day in your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's second. actually, it's very interesting. Like you look at business and really there, all there is, is people who prom like, like two aspects of your business, promising the client something and then actually doing the work, promising and fulfillment. Yes. Uh, promising and fulfillment. And you have back office. Yeah. IT finance helps you to deliver and promise. You put everything on the table. So simply it's like, it sounds so simple to do, but in practice, it's actually very, very hard. But the way yeah. you explain is just super, super simple. Because uh, in September will be 15 years since, since I start teaching. And I teach almost every day. That's my biggest uh, joy to teach almost every day. 15 years. Mm -hmm. You were five when I started, Ilan. You were five years old. Yeah, I remember you were making the YouTube videos and the daily blogs. <laughs> when I started teach. That's why I can explain it so simply. Because I, I work... The whole day, and then I teach during the evening. I try to explain everything that happens in in my business. So the 
so the, the second stage is uh, for you full time sale. Third stage, you hire first salesman. Third mm -hmm. stage, and you become a sales manager already. Actually, uh, sell yourself and manage one person. Third yes. stage, fourth stage, you hire two more sales managers and you become only sales manager. You already have fulfillment people. Mm -hmm. Fifth stage, you go be, be, be beyond, you hire sales manager and you already have a fulfillment manager and you already have back office people and you become operations director in your business, the fifth stage. That's proper development of the business. Yeah. We have another question here. It's in Russian, actually. I'm going to read it in Russian, and then I'm going to translate it for those who don't understand. Если ты шиложопый предприниматель, какой должен быть партнер? Um, партнер, который эффективно руководит? Basically, the question is, if you are a entrepreneur who is one who is like a visionary, all over the place, going here and trying to establish relations. Like you can't sit in a place. You're not a routine type of guy. You're always all over the place, right? What do you look for in a partner? Do you look for someone who is more operational, someone who could sit down in the chair yeah. and do work? Exactly like in family. If you wake up in the morning, you go out to hunt, uh, to, to, to find... Uh, to find uh, opportunities then perfect wife would be the who takes care of the yeah. household family kids not because you tell you told her to do because that's her personality and she likes it she's introvert you extrovert she's introvert you would right. love her if she's like you wake up in the morning you go to hunt she goes to hunt I mean, <laughs> you would not be attracted to her. Who would be with the children? Who would be with the uh, everything that you brought to the to, to the house? All the millions that you made. Somebody has to take care of. Yeah. So it, it, it exactly it works in, in work in partnership in business. One has to be the office guy who takes care of operation. One guy then can one in, partner can just run, uh, fly. Yeah. And um, and make connections and negotiations and partners. Mm -hmm. We have to wrap up soon because we're finishing up. But yeah, yeah if that's uh, if it's interesting for you and for people who were listening, we can do it regularly. I'm. Do, I, I would love know. to. I would love to. I'm we enjoying. Can a, we can have yeah. a series once a week. I'm. I'm for it for one hour. I'm. I'm for it as well. I'm for Every it as Tuesday. well. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do this final question right here. Actually, I'm going to ask two because we have one from the chat and then one is going to come personally from me. Let's do the one personally for me and then the last one in the chat. The one personally for me has to do with what we're talking about right now because you're now building a new company um, and you know you plan on taking this into the, into the billions. And something that you mentioned to me was, I feel like an, I cannot do it myself and I need a team of entrepreneurs around me you mentioned like 10 guys like i need 10 guys i need 10 entrepreneurs so that kind of contradicts what you're saying right now it's like you kind of need the yin and the yang if you're the opera if you're the entrepreneurial you know shila jropa pretpinyamaitil katore who always goes around runs around trying to do stuff you need the partner who's in the office right but with what you're saying you want to build a huge huge company is it possible to have other people that are like you, also entrepreneurial, also running around, also creative depends, guys. It depends of how big of the idea you have. For example, if uh, uh, 1789, uh, 1789, you came from uh, Great Britain with a uh, few friends and you want to uh, founding, you become a founding father of United States. Yeah. It's a huge idea. So you had you you needed to have five seven ten people that are starting this something huge the yeah. country so if you have a huge idea you can have three four five guys that are uh, like you who also like to run uh, around yes and and also few few people like uh, office 
it, it depends on how how big the how big the the, the business and idea interesting interesting okay and then the last question uh this comes from the chat is it right to have relatives on your team and in your business will the, the business flip? In, the, in the beginning yes later no i had all possible relatives uh, in my business in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, mainly because i just wanted to help help them help them we were all immigrants and i need, i wanted to help my parents the parents of my wife uh ex-wife and so on so i i took everybody uncle everybody to to work because i wanted to help i enjoyed this feeling of uh, i felt like a king because i'm head of the family i'm help i'm 25 27 i'm like helping everybody yeah but then when business becomes professional uh, no family mm -hmm. You have to buy them out, give them a couple of millions each, buy their shares, and uh, uh, and and continue building the business without relatives. Why? Why is that? Because relatives they are equal. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to urgently wrap up. We're gonna I'm, continue. I, the topic. I will continue. This is gonna be the first thing that we talk about uh, yeah, next. This week. is a, but this is very relative. important. I'll explain you why. Thank you, Alex, so much for your time. Let's go. Let's go attack the day. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Have a good one. Have a good day. Bye.